Welcome back to the Payne's Creek Killings. We're about to open a, possibly open a Foot Locker situation. Foot Locker, it's not really, it's a confession booth. Chest, I don't really know why the seats are also chests. Doesn't really make sense, but. All right, I just finished my water. I'm now flying dry. Okay. What's the what's the what's the word? So ten twenty four oh two. Got him. Dear Father Calvin, this is a letter to the things that I have witnessed during my stay in Payne's Creek while in attendance to Miss Magdalene Roberts. I have no one to confide in, and I dare not speak to you in public, hence my letter to you. I accompanied Mrs. Roberts to Payne's Creek on July 4th, 1975, to visit his son, her son, Charles. It, has, it was rumored that Vivian had, had a nervous breakdown and had to stay for rehabilitation for months. During that time period, Charles was all alone. He found comfort in a housemaid by the name of Sophia. They had an affair. A boy was born. Two days after arriving, we were informed that Sophia, together with the baby, had left Payne's Creek. Yeah, right. Where she was unknown to us all. I assume most of us believed the story, including myself. However, Mrs. Roberts refused to believe that Sophia would leave when could be part of the Roberts family. The boy that she bore for Charles would have guaranteed that. Mrs. Roberts thus initiated a search for Sophia with me and our driver, Patrick. It lasted less than two months before she passed away of a heart attack. Oh, that's why Vivian killed her because she didn't want to figure out her to figure out that they killed Sophia. What I want to confess in this letter is not about Sophia, although I was initiated by her disappearance. It's about Mrs. Roberts' untimely death. You see, Mrs. Roberts did have a heart attack, a heart condition for a while now. However, her medications have always kept her stable. Her prescription was still the same during her visit to Payne's Creek, yet her condition deteriorated. The family doctor, Dr. Henry Johnson, assured us that a search for Sophia has taken a toll on her death, on her health. All she needed was rest as much as she can, and she would be fine. I know that despite the doctor's advice, Mrs. Roberts did not stop the search. Did that create stress on her? Yes. But could it have killed her? According to the physician that attended to Mrs. Roberts back home, no. Definitely not within such a few short a sh short few weeks if she had taken her medicine. Her body was never autopsied. Her son, Charles, wanted her body untouched and buried well. As Patrick and I are packing to leave for home, I could not help but wonder, how could, who could have wanted Mrs. Roberts dead? Is there a connection between the affair of Charles and the housemaid, the disappearance of Sophia and her child, and the death of Mrs. Roberts? I would like to say whom I might suspect. Yet I am in no position because I am afraid that I might name the wrong person. As I write this letter, I hope you can understand what I am trying to convey. I pray that the truth shall be revealed, should God permit. Sincerely, Sylvia Eden. I, f I can't help but feel that we should have gotten that earlier. <laughs> it seems like we know all that stuff. Uh... Let me just maybe the same code opens this. Uh, ten twenty four oh two. Whoops. Ten twenty four oh two. No. Is this possibly the day of his death? That'd be wild as shit. So twelve oh seven eighty four. That would have been pretty morbid. Alright. If I remember correctly, there's also a six digit code that is that guy's desk. You know the guy. Matthew. Oh, it's four digits. Nineteen oh two? About 1984. No. 1975? No. Okay, let's just give up on that. 
Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. I have a four-digit code somewhere. Oh, no, it's that. Oh, I can do that, too. Okay, 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 okay. Also, these. I feel like we might have enough to solve that puzzle, but I don't. Study room, desk, and chess pieces. K, king, knight, q... I don't remember ever getting a code in not in letters that we could figure that out. Like it doesn't. Oh yeah, the picture could took the I, when I took the picture, I got the UI as well. Come on, game designers, get with it. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. It would probably be a pain in the ass, or at least unnecessary to program those out. Okay. Um. Did I even figure out what that key is for? Popular design as church keys during the 19th century. Now why would it mention that it's a church key or it looks like a church key if it ain't? Hmm, very interesting. Okay. Where did I find that again? I can look. But uh was it in It was either in Bernard's or Wanda's, right? I think it was Wanda's. Mm, was it though? No, was it Dorothy's? Dude, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to la rewatch the last one to figure out what the hell is going on. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna go back to the sheriff's place. Look at look in that filing cabinet. Old church key. Old church key. What would be... What would be an old church key? What would you... What would, or d design similar to an old church key. What would you use that for? I'm assuming any door that doesn't have an unlock prompt just can't be gone in. So, I'm just gonna check these doors maybe it opens Oliver's something I don't know man I'm, I'll check that doesn't look like <laughs> I doubt anything up there nope I figured out your I figured out the riddle of the Sphinx here. Okay. Ooh, is it possible? Didn't Bernard describe uh, Vivian going up the street? Never mind. No. Oh my god, it's so scary to me that you could just boom, press yes, and end the game. What would. I'm kind of actually curious. What is the ending if you just leave? You get fired from your job. I'm gonna go up here. Oh, doesn't even have an unlock prompt. Never mind. Okay. I'll just head to the sheriff's. What would an old church key? Or, I mean, it's not a church key, apparently. But what would an old looking key be used for? Is there any particularly old buildings here? Do not know. 
I'll check the post office because I feel like at some point we're supposed to get in there. Oh. Apparently not. Um, cafe. Hmm? Not there either. Alright, let's just go to the back to the uh, sheriff's area. No. Hmm. Not over here. Have I already been here? Am I crazy? Okay. Ten. I don't know, man. I'm just checking all these doors for basically shits and giggles. Definitely need to. Maybe. It d the thing that's throwing me off is why would it describe itself as like it looks like it would go to a church if it doesn't? Like. It seems intentionally misleading if, it, if that's the case. Alright, uh. Do I have a picture? 7741. Uh, get slammed. To Sheriff Howard. The crack in Vivian Roberts' skull shows the weapon used as an object was... It is an object with a heavy and sharp end. Something like an axe would fit the description. <laughs> to cause a crack that big, the attacker must be strong. I'm assuming it's either a man or a strong woman who's experienced in the use of the weapon. The victim must have been facing the attacker because of the lacerations found on the front of her torso as well as backside of both forearms showing that she tried to block the attacks by holding up her arms. The fatal strike landed on the right side of the victim's head uh, right above her right eyebrows. This clarifies the following, that the victim was facing the killer, that the killer is strong enough to land such a clean but deadly blow and... The killer is left-handed. By the way, the murder weapon was never recovered. Since this is me doing you a favor, do not under any circumstances leak this information or I'll be in big trouble. The police did not want the public to know about these details. Hope this above information helps. Sean M. Smith. Vivian Roberts murder case record of the alibi. I wasn't here when my wife was killed, this is Charles. I left for New York on July 18th to attend a conference meeting that was supposed to last for three days. I was supposed to be back on the weekend, on the morning of July 20th. However, I received a phone call from our butler, Bernard, telling me that Vivian had been murdered. I could not believe what I had heard. I cut short my trip and immediately came back to Paints Creek. <clears throat> There is the annual religious gathering event in Hartford which pastors from different churches on the East Coast area meet and discuss about what we should do what we can do to help our society. The event started on July 18th for 5 days, which included the prayer nights that ended July 23rd. I represent Paines Creek Trinity Church church at the event. Our church can confirm this because we can cancel our Sunday we had to cancel our Sunday service that weekend. Jesus Christ. I've done too much reading today. I was preparing for the fundraising event when I felt sick as Bernard. However, there was no one who could really do my job, so I kept working. At about 9 in the evening, I was too sick to continue, so I bid Vivian goodnight and head back home. Dorothy saw me leave. No, there was no one else at home. I live alone. Yeah, but we know Bernard has a history of faking sickness. He, he said in his diary that he, he called out multiple days, even though he wasn't sick, to stalk Vivian. Yes, Bernard was not feeling well that day, so he left slightly earlier than usual. However, he finished his work before he left. 
When I saw how sick he looked, I wondered how he could have kept on working. Well, I guess that's why the Roberts family trusts him so much. Me, I was around the mansion most of the time, either preparing the food or making sure that the other maids were doing their jobs. The fundraising event, which has to be held the following day, was important to Vivian, which was to be held. So we were all making sure that everything was perfect. By the time Mary left, it was already past midnight. I locked the doors and then went home by myself. No, I live alone. My name is Mary Martinez. I've been working in the kitchen for the past few days for the upcoming fundraiser event. Jimmy's Bakery was supposed to deliver the cakes, but a few days before the event, they called to inform us that they can't make it. Suddenly, I was in charge of the cakes. I was so mad because we did not have much time, and the, and the event was supposed to be one of the most important days for Vivian's business. But after hearing that Vivian was murdered, somehow all this anger just disappeared. Derek. I remember dropping Mr. Roberts off at the airport on July 18th around 2 p.m. I was supposed to come back after that to drive around for Vivian, but she told me to take a break since I haven't had a day off for quite some time. I decided to visit a friend of mine who moved upstate to Norwalk. What sort of friend? An elementary school buddy that you, we used to live to here, but moved when he recently when he received a scholarship to college. I stayed at his place for a few days before coming back to Payne's Creek. Yes, he can vouch for me. I have his number at home. I can give it to you later. Derek never gave me the number. Hmm. Why would Derek kill Vivian, though? Doesn't really make any sense. Oh, let's go. Lost and found. A car key. I bet that's... What the fuck is that? Uh, apparently not important. I bet that's Steve Moss's glove box. I bet that's what it'll open. Um, let's let's go. Did I never read this? Vivian Roberts' funeral was held this at. Wait. Oh my God! I never read it. I'm a goddamn idiot. Vivian Roberts' funeral was held this afternoon. Bernard the butler, Dorothy the head servant, Derek the family chauffeur, and his mom Wanda, who is fighting cancer, attended. Vivian's husband, Charles, came with her daughter, Trisha. Charles did not say a word. He was very quiet. Most of the townsfolk came and paid respect to the funeral. Halfway through the ceremony, Trisha started to weep loudly. Dorothy brought her elsewhere, and the weeping died down. I noticed that Dorothy looked tired. It must have been tough to take care of Trisha, who has recently been having multiple breakdowns. I can't blame her. With the loss of her mother and with their boyfriend being accused as the killer, it must be, have been too shocking for her. I feel sorry for the whole family. The town of Payne's Creek is quickly becoming a ghost town. The population has decreased drastically over the years. Ever since the deaths appeared, it seems that more and more people are leaving this town. It's sad to see how a once lovely, lively town can become what it is now. It's been almost six months since Vivian was killed. Her death still bothered me. Why was she killed? What was the killer's motive? As someone who's earned the love and respect of her people, both from her company and from the people of Payne's Creek, there was no sign saying that her life would be in danger, let alone be murdered. It doesn't make any sense. Payne's Creek Community Hospital is officially closed. Most of the remaining patients have been allocated to other hospitals that provide suitable services for them. To be honest, it's hard to watch them leave. I wonder if the day will come where I'll be reassigned somewhere else. Yeah, man. Rough. All right. Let's, uh, what? Okay, I'm gonna go try to look at. I'm thinking that's Steve Moss's car key. Which probably will open his glove box, hopefully. And that will. Sorry, I was pulling away from the mic. Uh, and that will maybe get us some other juicy details. I'm really hoping that that bottom drawer was not open the entire time. Can a filing cabinet actually work like that? Where one lock at the top can lock all of them? Or did I just never check those drawers? 
Either way, god damn it. No, the first one's pretty cool. If a single lock at the top can lock all the doors, that's awesome. But if I just didn't open them, that's pretty disappointing. Ay ay ay. I need to write down to remember that uh I might as well do it now actually. Not write it down, but just try to look for it. The writing on the buildings. Yeah, there's that bloody handprint. Yes. Lockbox 201. Oh, yes. Let's go. Steve Moss. My head hurts, my tire's flat, and the phone's not working. Is someone trying to stop me from leaving Payne's Creek? Am I close to finding something? Oh my god, I thought he was the one, but I was wrong. He is not the killer. Steve. Be more specific, dude. God. You're really pissing me off. Let's go open up that lockbox. Open up your lockbox, boys. He's not the killer. Who? Bernard? I don't think he, he thought Scott was the killer. Uh... So who did he who would he think is the killer and then be like oh shit no it ain't okay He's on to me, and I had to hide the key in one of the drains by the roadside. He will never find. Oh, that's where I found that key. Thanks for reminding me, note. What? What's the button for? What button? Steve Moss. Ever since I received the telegrams and the key, I've been following this anonymous person blindly. What a fool I've been. I need to revisit my investigation notes and see if I have missed anything important. I looked through the alibis recorded by Sheriff Howard. There were six interviews, Charles, Matthew, Bernard, Dorothy, Mary, and Derek. Then I noticed it. One of them is lying. It was recorded that there was an event. Yet I remember reading somewhere about it being canceled. Where did I read it again? Darn, I can't seem to remember. An event so the conference the religious thing I think I think I do remember reading that it was canceled oh my god I just realized that the letter E in the killer's letter is different from the other I, I did notice that the typewriter has like a, a raised E uh, if I can find the typewriter I can find who killed Vivian yes Yes, I remember that. The, the E in the note is raised compared to the other ones. Um, Better take a pick. Ah! threat yes the ease it's raised so we need to look at typewriters we need to go through everyone's house and look at the typewriter and then we know who killed Vivian okay I want to because a freaking Steve made a big deal over this, uh, over these things.
I need to go. I'm gonna go take a picture of that picture. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So whoever was in room 201, I feel like. Because it wasn't Steve. Steve was in like 204 or something. What's the button for? Where is this? He's on to me. I had to hide the key in one of the drains by the roadside. He would never find blank ledger. Who's in 201? Neil Merle. Who's Neil Merle? Steve Moss is. Oh no, Steve Moss was in 201. Never mind. I'm insane. Whoops. Alright. There's a couple weird things we can do. Which is. Look at the puzzle. Um. Oh, there's. Huh. <laughs> I feel like I remember seeing this. That's funny that they would put this in there. I like that. Um. Just so you you don't have to just know how to score darts, you can you can come here and figure it out. That's a nice touch. Um, there's two things we could do: look at everyone's typewriters and try to figure out uh, Matthew Brooks's like little game thing with the words on the buildings. So uh, I think I'm gonna do one more episode for this sesh, and then I'm gonna play Night in the Woods or something. All right, see you next time.